start time? Yeah. yeah. Okay, because we uh, had the Drupal event in Barcelona, and actually Barcelona is like you have half an hour at least late when you start the session. So <laughs> <laughs> better to ask, so everybody's on the same date. Uh, hi everyone. Um, today I'm going to uh, talk about the largest Drupal 8 websites on Earth um, and the uh, NP8 news portal distribution. So it's a Drupal 8 distribution which allowed to actually build those uh, huge websites. It's not going to be uh, super technical. So you see it's like one flame on the, on the, on the guide, on the schedule. Uh, if you have more technical questions, please come to me in the end, okay? And we can uh, talk about it. I'm a more technical guy, but um, I'm not going to be deep into the details, into the technical details during the session, okay? Um, so who am I? Uh, I'm uh, Augustin de Laporte, working in a French, uh, working in France, based in Paris. Um, and I'm working at uh, platform.sh, which is a hosting solution uh, that usually was built, uh, at the beginning was built by uh, commerce guys. And now we've split, so maybe you've read the news. Now we are two different companies, and commerce guys has uh, taken its own Pass and platform SH is now a dedicated company. We do hosting. My Twitter, if you need it, uh, Gugus on fire, and uh, my GitHub is Gugus. I've uh, joined the Drupal community six or seven years ago as a Drupal developer, and uh, now I'm a product delivery manager. I went to a developer to a product manager, and now product delivery manager. Summary. So what am I going to uh, talk about today? I'm going to talk about the Drupal 8 distribution, which has really revolutionized the, the Swiss digital industry. <coughs> so the, the website I'm going to talk about, the largest uh, Drupal 8 websites, are Swiss websites. It can be impressive, but that's, that's the case. They are based uh, in Switzerland, and they are the portals for news and digital uh, media. So the websites own a lot of channels, TV channels, newspaper, radio station, and they have built a portal to actually have all of those channels into one place. Uh, nope, I need to go down. Yep, so those two websites, the first one is a Swedo Schweiz. I give you the URL. The slides will be available on the um, uh, page of the DrupalCon. So if you need uh, to get the URLs, you can. Swedo Schweiz, one very, very big media site. And Le Temps. Maybe you've heard about them, maybe not. Uh, probably not. It's French and Swiss, so maybe not. And I am not the one who actually said that was the biggest website in the world. Actually, Driss said that. Uh, you can find it on his Twitter. Uh, he said probably the biggest website. It was a couple of months ago. I'm not sure it's changed. Maybe not yet. Maybe it has changed, so I uh, need to check. But uh, in October 2015, Driss said that with 4.2 million page view per month, Le Temps, the second website I showed, is probably the biggest and the largest website built with Drupal 8. If you look at the date, 18th October, it's before the release, the actual 8.0 release of Drupal 8. So the biggest websites built with Drupal 8 were actually built before Drupal 8 was released. Pretty impressive. I didn't build those sites. Um, they were, like, I would say, they were both launched before the actual release of Drupal 8. So they were working. Uh, with beta version of Drupal 8. They were both, both built out of the same distribution. We are going to see what's this distribution. It's, uh, it's called MP8. Uh, it's a uh, uh, yeah, Drupal 8 based distribution. So what's the story? Once upon a time, we had this giant media company who owns many different channels, TV station, radio, newspapers, and they wanted to consolidate every single thing they have into one giant portal. Basically, they wanted uh, everything into one portal. We also had one of their competitor, one of their main competitor called Le Temps, and they wanted to actually revamp their own publishing portal the same way, but they only had three months. They had a very short deadline to actually uh, deliver the project. Never miss a deadline. And we had Gasman. Another competitor of them, I think it's a bit smaller. Uh, and same thing, they wanted everything to, uh, into one place for their publishing portal. Those three competitors were facing common issues. They were facing the same issues. They have the same problems, not the same customers, but the same problems. So how do you solve the problem when you have the same problem as your competitors? Basically, they needed to work together. 
how do you work together with your computer? That's a good question. It's, it can be hard. So that's a, a quote from me. Uh, <laughs> I didn't really find uh, anything else, but basically they realized that they could not fix all of those issues if they were funding the innovations by themselves. Okay. So the only solution they found was to work together into funding a common open source project. So that in that case, they could actually benefit from the work of all of those people working on the same project and then implement or tweak it a bit so that they can actually uh, improve it for their uh, own purpose. And that's what open source allows. That's what Drupal can allow. Uh, I'm not the first one to actually um, talk about that. Uh, if you know the Acquia LSD uh, initiative, the large scale Drupal initiative, they have actually started a long time ago to actually put competitors together to actually solve the problems that uh, they all face, right? So that's uh, very interesting. If you, have, if you have not heard about it, uh, you can actually uh, find it. It's called LSD. It's a pretty fun name. But. Um, and the thing with the distribution, actually, I'm not the one who discovered that. Drist, uh, again, Drist. So, uh, when you quote Drist, you're like, right, right? Um, and he said that in 2010, that at some point, it's still the case, but at some point in 2010, the, West, the, net, the web was a really, really big mess. Everyone was implementing its own integration with its own service. We had nothing to actually put things together. That's what Drupal allows. You solve a common issue into a dedicated module, for example, or a theme or a library, in order to uh, standardize the cost. If you do that, it's going to really reduce the training, the maintenance that you're going to have for that website because you can just uh, take from uh, the community, from the contribution. You don't need to maintain everything yourself. Uh, the security also, you can just upgrade to a new version and get all the security updates. And of course, into, um, optimize all your internal resources. That's super important. And what the distribution is and allows is actually to put all of those uh, solver for your problems into one big package, and then you install that. You, everybody is familiar with distribution, Drupal distribution. Okay, so um, what that's what the distribution is. It packs many uh, modules, configurations, uh, content, themes, libraries into one main portal that you can install and then tweak based on your needs. That's how the NP8 distribution, NP8 is for news portal distribution, came out. Who funded that at the very beginning? Two of the competitors that uh, I've uh, presented previously. The Somedia. Somedia is the web agency that is owned by uh, Swedish Heights. And uh, Gasman Media, same thing, the web agency, um, <coughs> internal agency owned by the Gasman Group. Who did the implementation? That's the uh, interesting part. It's a Swiss company, maybe some of you know them, MD System. Very big contributor now to uh, Drupal 8, also to Drupal in general, but a very big contributor to Drupal 8. They are based in Switzerland, in Zurich. In Zurich. Zurich. And how did that uh, NPI distribution get developed? That's also interesting. I'm not going to go very deep into that. Uh, it took one year, one full year to actually implement that implement that distribution. It was based on two weeks sprint backlog, so they were, every two weeks, they were releasing the version of the, of the distribution and send that to both, to the two clients, the two competitors, and say, okay, what's your stake, how we move forward from that, every two weeks, for one year. There were three people, three full-time developers from MD System, and two guys full-time from uh, the customers to actually review, make sure the theme are okay, make sure the features are flexible, generic enough. So it was really like time consuming for uh, a company to actually develop uh, a solution like that. Really, they made a big investment into that distribution. Uh, it's 100% test driven using VHAT. Maybe you're familiar with VHAT, Ming. Um, and it's 100% CI driven. You can uh, test everything, deploy everything easily. Nope, not that one. The overview, in the end, what has this specific distribution brought to Drupal? 42 contributing modules, all built by the MD system guys. 15 uh, custom modules features that are big features that are included 
into the distribution itself that are not open sourced, and uh, all the steps for the test. Okay. Some features that uh, this news portal provides out of the box, and there are many more, and uh, you can read the full list on their website, actually. Uh, whole publishing, you install, you have uh, a tool, a website ready for publishing. You can publish anything, news, all the dossier, all the region. You have a paywall if you want to have content that is only displayed or accessible to specific, uh, to paid users, actually, you can sell content. Uh, search, scheduling, blog, newsletter, everything included to Drupal 8 already with that. You also have all the community features, of course, if you're a media uh, or a digital company, digital website, you want your users to interact with your content, users to ask questions, users to be able to uh, rank the content that is displayed on the website, customize it, everything is there. And last but not least, third party integration. Drupal 8 allows you to actually very easily integrate with third, uh, third party services via the services. Um, and it's already configured and out of the box. Okay, so you can integrate with any kind of payment services or uh, Woodwind content, AB testing, everything. And this out of the box also. The complete text integration, of course, we have uh, we, uh, talked about it. The best practices. Actually, with Drupal, you have many ways to build the same thing. But most probably, you have one or two very good ways to actually build it for the maintenance, for the test, for the um, security patches, and this distribution has really been built with best practices. So if you read the code, you know that that's the way you should actually be building a distribution. It has a completely uh, like search API integration, um, of course rules and views, but basically it really has very strong best practices integrated into the core. All the content is migrated using the migrate module, for example. And it allows the multi-channel strategy. What does that mean? That means you don't only have a website, but you can also have a mobile application, as Drift was uh, talking today. You don't always have a website. If you're selling something, the user will not always go to your website to buy what you're selling. He can just go stay on his mobile and have the application, or from someone else reselling your product. Um, and that's what they do with actually publish content that can be sold uh, into other platforms. Okay, so the channel you don't you don't actually uh, control how your content is going to be delivered to the end-to-end -end customer. Here is the actually complete list of the project description, the NPA distribution. You can uh, check that. It's in English. And how did they actually build that distribution? The tools that they used were first Drupal 8, of course. Why? Because Drupal 8 has a very, very uh, nice, uh, some very, very nice features that allow them to actually build, build their distribution very fast. The WYSIWYG and in-live editing, of course, for publishers, you want many people to be able to edit the content live and test the content and stage the content. Uh, the cache system, the very, very strong cache system, um, this is a very important feature for, the, for media companies. If you have a breaking news, you don't want your you want your users to have the news first, right? If, if not, you're losing uh, customers. So the cache system of Drupal 8, which is very very flexible and very powerful, allowed them to actually um, implement and build what they wanted to build. And as we said, the services integration. They also used Fastly. Anyone is familiar with Fastly? Right. So Fastly is a CDN. CDN is a content delivery network. It basically caches your content and puts it in a node which is often closer to the customer that, uh, than your actual server where the data lives. Okay, so if I'm a customer and I connect um, to a website which, which is using Fastly, I'm going to first go through the CDN, through Fastly, and request the content from there. If the content is in the node where I'm searching, which is close to my uh, internet connection, I'm going to get the content from Fastly. I'm not going to reach the origin. The origin is the server with, with the, with the um, SQL uh, database and all the data, the actual data lib. Okay, so most of the time I will be reaching directly Fastly as a CDN. And the kind of the feature that they provide 
are really, really powerful. Compared to other CDN, if you want to change the configuration, for example, of the CDN, the way you're doing the caching or the logic, <coughs> Fastly provides real-time CDN. Real-time CDN means if you do a configuration change, it's going to spread out to all the nodes of the world where they have their nodes and automatically update the configuration. You don't need to wait a couple of hours for your change to propagate and test your change. And if you're um, doing like quick fix or hot fixes or patches to your cache implementation, real-time CDN is exactly what you want. So they really have instant propagation of the updates. That's one very powerful feature. And they also have the key-based purging. And this is super important. That's also related to how Drupal 8 handles caching. Key-based purging, purging means, purging a cache means uh, you remove everything that is in the cache and you recreate it uh, from the origin, which means the first users that are going to access your, um, your server after it has been uh, purged will go to the origin and it's going to take a while for them because they are the ones that are going to recreate the cache for every node on the planet, okay? And when you do purging, you actually purge everything. You cannot say, I want just purge this because that's the only thing that has changed, okay? With key-based purging, that means Fastly has a concept of surrogate key and they can say, okay, I got a category of products. For example, I'm selling uh, t-shirts and I'm selling uh, something else, sweatshirt. <laughs> And I'm only updating the prices, for example, of the t-shirts. And I got a key, and I can say, Fastly purge me all the t-shirts. And Fastly will be able to go to all the nodes and say, remove the content that you have in your cache only for the t-shirts. I don't need to recreate everything. And that's super powerful, because you can update one thing and not have the old cache completely rebuilt all the time. In terms of performances, that's super interesting. The real-time logs and statistics. Every time something happens on one node of the planet where you have your uh, Fastly nodes, you can see that on your portal, on your dashboard, live. So if you have a peak, if you have uh, something happening, you can see that live. I think other CDN might also have this feature, but it's uh, a requirement if you're working with uh, a CDN. And of course, last but not least, it's built only with FOSS technology. FOSS means um, open source something. Uh, free open source something. Software, open source software. Software, right. So Varnish is one of them. Uh, Varnish is a caching system that a lot of Drupal sites use. Uh, they build Fastly on top of Varnish. And it's used by major websites. The largest websites actually use Fastly. And last but not least, Drupal.org uses Fastly. So you have many research, many uh, blog posts about it. Super interesting, Drupal.org. Um, there is a big case study explaining why they did choose Fastly, and um, I really encourage you to go uh, to that website and read it. I just figured out I missed some couple of slides at the very beginning, and I'm going to go back in time, show you those slides, and then go back to the tools. Is that fine with you guys? I hope yes. Um, actually, yes. At the very beginning, Robert Douglas asked me, you know Robert Douglas? He's, um, he was supposed to uh, be doing the pre-note. Uh, he could not come, unfortunately. And he was uh, supposed to do that session. And because he couldn't come, he was like, who can be doing this session? And he went to me and said, Augustin, can you be doing this session? Why did he ask me? And that's because at the very beginning, I was the project manager of the Commerce Kickstarter distribution. Have you heard about Commerce Kickstarter? Someone use it? Someone use it? OK. So Commerce Kickstarter when it was out, was really a revolution. And it's the, it was a revolution in the way of how people built distribution. We completely went from scratch and implemented a complete uh, theme, for example, for the installation profile. So we completely tweaked the installation profile. We completely tweaked the things that you could configure from the beginning of your website. So every Kickstarter installation is completely different from one another because you can choose the VAT that you want, you can whether you want VAT or sales tax, you can choose the currency, you can choose your country, you can choose what kind of product you want to import. You have very complete uh, installation steps that you can have, and we built that distribution as uh, using best practices. Again, with the search API integration, all the views are indexed via search API, uh, the admin faced views, um, user faced views. Many things are very um, easy sometimes to improve or extend, but that's really using best practices. 
and uh, I work on that product as a product manager when we were still commerce guys. And uh, sometime last year, I started my uh, own uh, e-commerce store, and I built it also with uh, e-commerce distribution. I'm selling t-shirt for a couple. This is my wife here, and uh, it's going pretty well. <laughs> uh, of course, uh, yeah, that's why I wanted to uh, go somewhere. It's free shipping, uh, maybe not in India, but uh, in France it's free shipping. Yeah, thank you. So if you want to order one, feel free to. Uh, they are built with a distribution, of course, I said that multiple times, and they are hosted on platform SF. That's the, uh, the part why we are talking about that, because those websites are hosted on platform SF. Platform SF is a hosting solution, and that's why I wanted to go back in time. Now we can go back to the tools. Firstly, platform SF. Um, you know Sasha Grossenbacher? Uh, he's working with MD System. He's one of the main contributors to Drupal 8. I think the single <coughs> most Drupal 8 contributors. And they, um, they were trying to see how they could implement their uh, build this distribution using continuous integration, continuous delivery, and continuous deployment. Those things are a bit different. Continuous integration means every line of code that the developer push, pushes somewhere can be tested. Continuous delivery means every line of code that the developer pushes somewhere can be tested and validated by a customer or you have a URL to actually test that. And continuous deployment means every line of code that the developer pushes can be tested, of course, uh, validated via uh, um, URL and deployed as is. That means you really need your development environment to look like your production because you don't want to push something that will look or behave differently on your production server. You want to completely guarantee that what you're testing on your development environment really behaves the same way. And they went to us um, because we provide high availability also, like triple redundancy. I'm not sure if, it, uh, if you're familiar with that concept. High availability means every <coughs> single service running on your website is, trip, is redundant three times. So you have three nodes running in three dedicated data centers. So if one data center completely dies, you still have your website running. If you want to do an upgrade um, of um, your website, you want to change the infrastructure of your website or do some updates, uh, one node is going to be the master, and you can do the update and upgrade into the other slaves that are, um, that are running. So you never, never, never lose the accessibility to your website. The website, no matter what, will always be available to your customers. And because of that, we can really upsize or downsize without taking the application offline. That means if you need more resources to your website, you don't need uh, any downtime. It's not going to require any downtime. And we can do that. Um, it, it's pretty important <coughs> if you're expecting a huge peak of traffic because it's uh, Christmas, but maybe Christmas doesn't uh, really matter here. Um, but if you're expecting some big sales because there is a event coming, you can actually upsize your server and your website uh, without taking the application uh, offline. That means you can really test an upsize and go back to a downsize very easily. And that's interesting for the uh, de continuous deployment. Everything in the platform is Git based. That means everything needs to go via Git. The configuration of your infrastructure, your content, <coughs> not the content, not all of the content, all the configuration and uh, all, the, the, all the application, the submodules, everything goes through Git. So you cannot fake the system. You cannot access uh, your server and change something, do a small tweak, hotfix or patch, and say, yeah, it should work. No, you need to go through Git. You need to redeploy the application, but you don't take it offline, so it's fine. And um, that's how uh, you work with platform. Now, what was the outcome for MD system who built that distribution? The CEO of uh, MD System himself said that actually that opportunity to build uh, a distribution because some competitors were having uh, similar issues really took them to a completely different level into knowing Drupal 8 and mastering Drupal 8. Now they have a complete team of uh, developers that, um, that know Drupal 8. One thing interesting about is it working? Yeah. About the NPA distribution, and I didn't mention that yet, it's split in between some open source contribution, the old modules, the old themes, the libraries that have been built, and also 
a closed distribution. <coughs> so the distribution itself is not open source. We'll see how you can use it, but it's not open source. Okay? You're going to tell me, hey, the GPL license, you have to put it open source? Yes. But we're going to see how this model can work. Now there are number two Drupal contributors. There is a page on uh, Drupal.org, which, uh, as Dries mentioned earlier in the, in the, in the keynote, and, and this team is the uh, number two contributor to Drupal 8, to Drupal in general. Uh, but that's because of that distribution that they built, it allowed them to really master Drupal 8. They're really a big uh, agency now to, um, to work with the Drupal 8 project. And what was the ROI, the return uh, on investment for them? They now have a very big, uh, I think it's a user selling proposition for Drupal 8 and uh, delivering a project with Drupal 8. They upgraded all the contributed modules that they own, that they contributed to Drupal 8. That's super important. A lot of companies are going to be stuck with uh, contributions that were for Drupal 7. Their clients are going to tell them, hey, you had that for, uh, for Drupal, why can't you uh, make it for Drupal 8 now? You need to upgrade. It's not easy to actually upgrade. It is easy, I mean, it depends. But uh, actually, they, they have upgraded all of, the, of their module. And they started the internship program. So they have a six months internship program where all of the interns have uh, contributed modules to Drupal 8. So they were all working at some point in the distribution, in the NPA distribution. And they were, um, they were all in the, they, they, they were all working with Drupal 8 at the very beginning. So if you're doing an internship and you have the chance to work early on Drupal 8 and have some, uh, um, some contributing code to Drupal, it's a uh, it's very great um, opportunity for you as a Drupal developer. They also have this website, which, uh, oh, no. which I encourage you also to uh, have a look at. Maybe it's not uh, accurate as much now, but when Drupal 8 was in beta or alpha, this website, they were maintaining this website to actually check what was the status of each of the contributed module that exists for Drupal 7 and its status, its migration status to Drupal 8. Does it, does it work? Does, uh, does it have tests included? So you could find any module for Drupal 8 and check whether or not uh, it was ready for uh, use for Drupal 8. And now, how do you actually use NPA. If you're interested, you have a very big customer, major customer that would like to benefit from that and use that um, <coughs> that NPA distribution. Uh, remember, I was talking about Le Temps and Le Temps, uh, this big website. They had three months to actually deliver the project. They had a very big deadline, very short deadline. So they went to uh, MD System and they said, "We have three months. Can you help us to do something?" They said, "Yeah, we have a distribution. Uh, you can use it." And that's how they actually managed to finish the website instrument and be live. If you want to use it, you need to pay a buy-in fee. Okay? So you pay uh, a buy-in fee to the investors, to the original investors. And, of course, the GPL license, which actually forces you, not forces you, but requires you to actually deliver the code if you deliver the, a project built using uh, GPL license. So basically when you buy this uh, buy fee, you, can, you get the code of the MPA. And then it's a fair partnership policy which says you can uh, deliver the code, but you can also keep it for you, and then keep on reusing and reselling it for other uh, customers. I think that's, uh, that's a model that if as an agency, as, as an agency, you can continue contributing a lot of code and a lot of modules to Drupal 8 because of that distribution. But you can also keep it. Uh, you can in the in the meantime, you can keep it for you, contribute the modules that you want to um, you want to outsource to uh, open source, but keep the distribution so that you can improve it and make it better and resell it for all your customers. That's the idea behind that. We can talk about it later. Uh, and yeah, so for now, if you want to start using the NP8, I can uh, show you a quick demo of the NP8 distribution after that if you're interested. But to start with, if you want to use NP8, you need to contact the MD system guys. Okay? The slides will be uh, online after. Now, as part as uh, the reflection, it's already the time to promote Drupal 8 to your customers, even though some contributions have not migrated you should be starting your Drupal 8 project now because they were already starting when Drupal 8 was not even released. Now that it's released, 
uh, it's really time to uh, migrate and go to Drupal 8. You should not uh, start a new project now with Drupal 7. That's a very uh, good time. And if you have that kind of big customer's problem, you should be building a distribution, I think. That will allow you to reuse the, the time that you invested in the first project and the money you invested in the first project and split it into all the projects that you might have in the future. That's it. I think it was a bit shorter than I expected. Yep. Uh, that's about it. Thank you very much for your attention. Now you can ask me anything or tweet um, if you want to ask questions. And do you have questions? Yeah. Okay, so basically the question is, uh, you, you pretty much you have to pay money to buy in. What's that about? How much <coughs> is it? And what's that about? And I think that's Drupal's have different license for the license <coughs> you talk about this distribution. So what's different right here? Did you say uh, if, if, you, if you're doing uh, module building uh, for this distribution, so you can pick that, <coughs> not really for <coughs> the license is the same between uh, Drupal 7 and Drupal 8. It's the GPL license. Okay. Um, uh, anyway, so, yeah. I so think. Is it? Sure. Anyway, so we'll double check right now. I think uh, because from this morning, some, some, some guys have different supervisors. But we can check the Drupal 8. Anyway, so the question is um, yeah, okay, if we answer the second question, the first question, how much? How much? You need to ask the MD system, guys. I'm not uh, going to say any price yet. Okay. Uh, we can talk a bit uh, after. But because that's open source, right? Okay. The distribution is not open source. If you buy it, yeah. you'll get the source code. That's the idea. You get the source code if you buy it. What you mean is it's not free, but it's open source. Yeah. If it was open source, everybody would have access to it. It's not the case. You Only the people that pay for it have access to it. So it's commercial kind of open source. But all those modules, like there are 42 modules, but like you guys contribute all that back to the community. Exactly. So exactly. I mean, like all the like all the components are available. Exactly. It's the distro piece that you guys. Exactly. Want. So the glue that puts everything together is not open sourced. You can buy it to use it, but all the modules and all the components that make the, the, this distribution happen are completely available for for use. Okay, so you have the publishing modules, uh, the third-party integrations. Those are available on Drupal. On Drupal Europe. Okay, you can use them. You can recreate kind of the distribution like that. The, the thing is that if you have limited um, short deadlines or limit or constraints, you can use that distribution and benefit from it right uh, since the beginning. That's that's the idea behind the distribution. Well, that's, that's really No, platform has no, platform the DSH has nothing to do with the distribution. It's just hosting and that's how they build the um, distribution. So they had the one branch for every feature and they were testing and pushing a lot of stuff. That's the that's the only thing. It's not related really at all to platform the You can run it on platform the but So if you build something on the distribution, yes. you can't distribute. You can distribute. So you have this GPL Yeah, the, 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 the solution. You don't yeah. have to distribute it, but you can. When you're building a website for, for a client, basically, the client will ask you not to publish the, the, the code that you've, wrote, you've written for him, right? But you, you, you can distribute it. Nothing prevents you from distributing it. Just your, your client, right? That's how uh, the problem uh, works. How, how uh, costly, I mean, what is the effort that goes into because every time you update something, you need to test that it still works. But if you have uh, integration with tests, for example, and if all of your websites are pulling from that distribution, if you test it once, 
on the distribution, all the websites you build with that distribution are going to benefit from that uh, time invested. Okay, so here, those three websites, if they improve the distribution, they will benefit, the improvements will be made to all of the websites. So you don't need to go to each website and do the tweaks and do the fixes yourself. You can just improve the distribution that you're maintaining and pull from it. You see what I mean? So basically, if you, you, you just need to do the maintenance once. You don't need to do the maintenance on all of your uh, customized websites that are built using that distribution. So we are hosting, so we, pro we propose to our customers the CDN that is that best suits their needs. Most of the time, we propose uh, CloudFront, which is the AWS Amazon uh, in integrated CDN. But if they need something more like what the, with the features that, uh, that they want, we propose Fastly definitely. I think we are going to migrate completely to Fastly. For now, CloudFront is integrated with uh, AWS, and we are mostly on AWS. Most of our customers are uh, on AWS, so they get the cloud font almost done. So what was the selection for choosing Fastly? Was it like being able to load like partial cache? Like, was that the thing that you needed to do? The, the, the two key components were the, the, the key purging, being able to purge only specific stuff and not the whole thing, and the instant configuration. If you, if you read the Drupal blog post, they will say that before, when they wanted to do an improvement on their cache system, I don't remember which one, which was it, which one was it, but the, it took five hours. So you do a change, and you need to wait five hours so that your change was actually propagated. And you pray for your users to not do anything stupid before and during that time frame because you cannot control how the cache is going to behave. So your site might be unavailable or just very, very long to, to load. Now it takes seconds. In a couple of seconds, all the nodes are propagated. So the architecture of Fastly is way more powerful in terms of CDN. So that's the main reason. The only problem with Fastly is the more uh, your page, your, your website grows, and the more views it has, uh, the more the price uh, grows. So you, you pay with the number of page views and the number of hits that the CDN actually gets. So the more viewers are looking at your site, the more you're paying. And basically, the more viewers are looking at your site, the better you're, you are. So you grow as a with your CDN, and the CDN grows with you. But it's very powerful. It's super important. Any other question, guys? Yeah. It's like, uh, you know, like, what is one of the profound features in Drupal 8 that sets it apart from other Drupal versions? Maybe from an end user perspective. That's a good question. Uh, that would mean very uh, comparing Drupal with others. I think you should first compare Drupal 8 with Drupal 7. Yeah, that's um, yeah. So. Very previous yeah, I think the main one is the configuration that is uh, uh, that is not in the database anymore, but in the um, in the in files, in the configuration files, with your staging, with your development, uh, and all the inline editing that makes the barrier to entry the Drupal world uh, that lowers the barrier to entry the Drupal world, because uh, it was super hard for users to actually start creating content, creating content type pages, everything. Now it makes things really easier. So all the UX work and uh, all that um, configuration files, which helps developers, I think those are the ones, the, the, the things. But then you need to compare to others, uh, other tools like Joomla or uh, WordPress. And then it's harder to compare because they have their own path, their, their own way of handling the things. So, I don't know, it's more like the, the one you like or the one you master, you should keep on using. Do you use a Some components of Symfony do, yeah. But as an end user or as a developer, it doesn't really impact you. It's more on the maintenance of the framework. Uh, we are not reinventing some uh, some parts that uh, that already exist and are, are already maintained by, by other communities. That's the only the, the main change. We're not re-implementing that for the Drupal 8. But as an end user, uh, I don't think you really care or matter. Uh, just helps the developer to, to, to get more productive or summarize the, contribu the contributed modules are more robust. Exactly. To reuse something that is maintained elsewhere and that has been tested and is really robust. Exactly. Thank you.
Yeah. Uh, so this distribution in PA, is this um, only applicable for, say, the news media industry, or do you feel there are other industry verticals for which it could be leveraged? That's a good question. The, the main point of the talk is not you should use the NPA. It's more uh, you should build a distribution using the, the existing stuff that are available for Drupal 8. Because if you have, I mean, those features are really dedicated to um, media and digital um, industries. If you have different use cases or different features, um, you should build it yourself and configure it yourself. You should not be, I think, for large customers, you should not just be building a website. You could build a distribution which can be reused then for other uh, use cases that you have. Has this been replicated? I mean, this is one instance but uh, where competitors have come together to create a distribution. But, uh, uh, has this been replicated across other, um, I mean, in, 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 in short, are there any other examples of it? For as a distribution, I'm not sure, but you should really check the LSD program, the large scale initiative, because that's exactly what they, they did, and they, they didn't really create a distribution, they created modules. So some very big modules used in Drupal have been actually funded by uh, competitors that had uh, issues. I couldn't say exactly the name, but that's, uh, that's how some very big modules were, were started at the beginning. So I'm, I don't know about distribution. I know that when we created Kickstart, it was at the beginning more for a demo store so that people could say, hey, that's what you can do with Drupal Commerce. Uh, and then people really started using that uh, as a starting point, like really 